Alright everyone, hope you're well. So today we're going to be doing something for fun. It is educational purposes only because this could go horribly wrong and uh, fail miserably. Because it could. So with that being said, what we're going to try and make today is a traditional Viking mead. Something as close to wood as would have been made back then. So they didn't have an understanding of yeast and nutrients and all of that stuff. They thought it was magic, which is cool. So, but we know different. So we're going to be taking a couple of steps to try and minimize the chance of uh, us making vinegar. Because we, we don't want that. So what I've done is I've sterilized my demijohn and of course my worktop has been sterilized and all the bits I'm going to be using are going to be sterilized. That being said, apart from that, everything is exactly the same. So if you wanted to skip the sterilization part, you in theory could for recipes like this because, well, they're traditional and they're supposed to have funk. Because they would. They would have a zing from some vinegar and they're meant to be drank quickly. So we'll see what happens. So in order to do this kind of properly, I had to go and buy a different type of honey. Normally you'll see me using this cheap honey. I've got a whole playlist of meads if you haven't seen them and I'll stick the whole playlist up there. Shameless thing. So uh, you can use cheap honey and you could copy this to an extent with this, but we're going as close as we can. So this honey is unfiltered, unpasteurized, raw, organic, and it's got all those names in it. And it is a uh, poly flower honey, means it's bees that, you know, from many flowers. Anyway, the thing that makes this so cool is that because it hasn't been heat treated and pasteurized, it's as close, you know, it's raw honey. It's got enzymes in there from the bee bath, because, you know, they're cool like that. It also has dormant wild yeast. It also has other things in there, probably some wild vinegar. You know, who knows what's in here? It is a lottery, but we're gonna use this as basically everything to make our kit. So you don't need yeast nutrient. You don't need fancy yeasts. A lot of the time people use champagne yeast. We're not doing that. We're using wild yeast and we're using the yeast inside here. Now this honey I got from Amazon. It sent me back about 13 pounds and um, yeah, it came from the Ukraine. So we're making Ukrainian Viking mead in Cornwall. That makes sense. Sure it does. So, step one. We're gonna open up this bad boy. Now because this is unfiltered, unpasteurized, raw, it's got all the stuff we want in there. We're not gonna be boiling this honey. Uh, we can't. We can't heat this honey above 30 degrees, which uh, is going to be a little bit of a problem because uh, this honey is solid as a rock. <laughs> but it does smell good. I will say it does smell good. Got a spoon. Ooh, that's cool. So this honey is crystallized, um, which basically just means it's kind of set. Honey doesn't go off, so still perfectly fine, but it is still pretty damn soft. Mmm. It melts in the mouth. That is a really, really tasty honey. Got a bit of a cold, so I can't taste it fully, but I can definitely say that there's floral fragrances in there. Hopefully this cold will be gone by the time it's finished. Mm. And it's not too sweet. According to this, per 100 grams, there is 75 grams, 74.8 if you want to be exact, grams of sugar per 100 grams of honey. So for this 1.5 kilo batch of honey here, that is 1.1 kilos of fermentable sugars. That's kind of a lot. That's, uh, that's, well, 12, 13% if it fermented to pure dryness. Just saying that. So, uh, mm, I could eat this honey all day, but that would be a completely different video. So, enough talking. Let's, uh, let's actually make this. So, it's actually pretty straightforward. 
I've got a mixing pan. Now, if this was runny honey, I could put it straight in the demijohn and mix it up that way, but it's crystalline, so it just means it's slightly old or uh, it's just, you know, a bit cold. So let's try and uh, get this inside a tub. Oh, come on. Yeah, I thought that. Eh, I'm gonna have to use a spoon, do it old school. So here we go. <laughs> I was trying to go traditional using a wooden spoon, but uh, I just got a, a stabby spoon instead. There you go, that happened. Attempt number two, with a metal spoon. So, <laughs> it's actually pretty soft, it just uh, feels, yeah, it's coming out now. So now we just start, oh yeah, adding this stuff in. So our honey is in the pan. Uh, funny enough, the metal spoon didn't break. So it's all in there. Oh yes, there's no going back now. So because this honey is slightly crystalline, it is pretty soft, but it needs a little bit of help. We need to add in some lukewarm water. It needs to be lukewarm. We can't have it like 40 or 50 degrees. It's about 25 degrees at most. You know, it's just tepid water like you were making bread. It's the easiest way to say. So in goes our water because we need to mix this up. And uh, let's just stir until it dissolves. So after a little bit of gentle agitation, otherwise known as stirring the bejesus out of it until it mixes and infuses, we're at the stage now where it's liquid enough that we can add it into our demijohn, which is cool. I also went ahead and added some water in there to clean out this as well. In it goes, so completely honey free. But it does smell like good honey. So, got my demijohn, it has been rinsed. Uh, it smells fresh, but not bleachy. Uh, this has also been sterilized as well. Again, for this particular style, old school thing, it's not necessary. I just want to minimize this as much as possible because, well, we're gambling. This could go horribly wrong. It could go really well. I don't know. So let's add in a sugary syrup. Look at that. Let's just keep going. About there. So you may notice I had the kettle up high that is introducing aeration into this brew. Cause well, this is a wild yeast. Uh, usually you don't need that much aeration, but since there is so little yeast in here, I mean, we're gambling on the yeast. We want it to come alive as quickly as possible. This is where good aeration is actually necessary. Uh, a lot of the times, all that stuff you see, not really needed. So now we need to mix this up. So let's uh, tighten the lid on and shake the life out of it. So, it has now been shaken. It's looking fairly well mixed. Now this is normally where we would take a hydrometer reading, but we're going traditional, we're going old school. We know there is approximately 1.1 kilos of sugar in here, and uh, cause well, we did some math. But they wouldn't have used hydrometers back in the Viking age, cause they didn't have them. And we're not going to either. Uh, this is a completely wild ferment. Potluck, we'll see what happens. So all we've got to do, now it's been aerated and mixed, open the cap and just lightly put it on. Now it is going to be a bit sluggish. It should take about three or four days to actually build up enough momentum to start brewing. And then it'll be at the starting point. And basically we just leave it alone. We don't add anything to it. Now, hopefully, this will take about one month, if it works and doesn't grow mold. 
it's not going to be a dry mead it is going to be a sweet mead it is using wild yeast and i have no idea what's going to happen that's half the fun so there we go a completely random and probably useless video but you get to find out if you can and i think that's that's cool so guys i really hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to check out some of the other ones and well subscribe if you feel like it carry on homebrewing See you later.